So we're going to look at amplitude modulation, or AM, uh, radio signals. And here's the challenge. Uh, we uh, want to record the vocal range, signals in the vocal range, which is up to about 5 kilohertz. This is the frequencies that uh, we can make when we speak. Um, and we want to then transmit them over an AM radio band channel, which is in the range 540 to 1600 kilohertz. So this is the AM band, uh, and this is the frequency band where we speak. Uh, I'm going to plot here with respect to F, just be so that these uh, frequencies are the ones we're familiar with for radio stations. Of course, omega equals 2 pi F, and you could plot with respect to omega. So what do we have? Well, let's say we had a signal, a recording, say, of my uh, voice, and it's a low frequency signal in, the, in comparison to uh, radio waves. It's definitely audio waves are low frequencies, uh, up to about 5 kilohertz. So here's a signal. Uh, we're going to take that signal, and we want to be able to transmit it in this frequency band. But it exists in this frequency band. So this is the Fourier transform of a typical Fourier transform of a typical signal, and it exists in this frequency band. Here's a typical example. So this is where the, the signal exists, the Fourier transform from 0 to 5 kilohertz, but we need it to transmit it over an antenna up at this frequency. So how do we get it up there? So the way we do it, and I'll, we'll see why in a minute, but is we multiply by a cos wave or a sinusoidal wave. And why do we do that? Well, here's the cos wave we're going to multiply by. And this one is at a high frequency in the frequency band that we are interested in. This is, I've tried to, I haven't drawn that very well, but I tried to draw it as a constant amplitude. So this is our cos wave at the carrier frequency. And so let's say we pick a, a typical radio station in, in Sydney, in Australia, uh, 702 kilohertz is a, is a radio station. Uh, and so if we pick a cos wave at 702 kilohertz, and in the time domain, if we multiply these two signals together in the time domain, then we're going to get a signal in the frequency range that we're interested in. And we'll see why. Uh, so these two multiplied together, of course, uh, you've got now, you're going to have a signal, which is going to be those two multiplied together. So it's this cos wave here, smaller and bigger. So the amplitude is being modulated. That's why it's called amplitude modulation. So the amplitude of the signal that you're going to send is modulated by a carrier at the frequency that you're going to send at. So when we multiply in the time domain, we know that we convolve in the frequency domain. So we're going to convolve these two signals. And another property we know in signals is that if you convolve a function with a delta function, then it shifts that function to be centered where the delta function is. So this is going to be what the frequency spectrum of the transmitted signal. This is the Fourier transform. So we know these things from the properties of signals and systems. Okay, so multiplying our signal by the carrier gives us an amplitude modulated signal. And in the frequency domain, that means we've convolved our signal with those delta functions, because this is the Fourier transform of the cos. This is the Fourier transform. And so when we're convolving, it was shifted, and clearly now we see our signal is in the right frequency band. Okay, so that's our, what our transmitter does. Now, what's going to happen in the channel? So we're going to put this signal in the time domain. We're going to put that into the channel. And in the channel, it's going to have other, channel, other radio stations added to it, of course. So there's a different radio stations all transmitted at other uh, frequency values um, in the neighbor, uh, neighboring frequency bands. And so that's what our receiver is going to pick up on our antenna and, of course, whatever other frequency stations are there. So in our antenna now, we're going to receive this signal, a signal here, which is the addition of lots of different radio stations. OK, so what do we do in the receiver? OK, so in the receiver, uh, we are going to uh, want to the first thing we're going to want to do in the receiver is to get rid of the other radio stations. So the way we do that is we multiply in the frequency domain 
by a function which is square and zero in between. And so if we multiply in the frequency domain, multiply these two functions together, then in the time domain, we are actually convolving. Okay, so we take our received signal, and in the time domain, we're going to convolve it with a function which has the inverse Fourier transform of this frequency domain function. Okay, so what is that? Well, again, we can use some properties from signals and systems. Uh, this is a rect function, a square function, which has been uh, shifted to appear at these values here. And so just exactly the same as we had up here, where we had this function appearing out there, if this function was a square, and if we convolved it with this, we would have the square out here. And this is what we have now, we have the square out here. This is our filter, and this is our bandpass filter, BPF, bandpass filter, to get rid of the other radio stations. So this is a, we can, we, this filter has an impulse response, uh, which is, in the frequency domain, it is the convolution of a square with a cos. So in the time domain, it is the multiplication of the inverse Fourier transform of the square with the cos. Okay, so this is the inverse Fourier transform of a square is a sinc function. And so we are going to be uh, having the sinc function multiplied by the cos, so we've got, uh, I'm trying, just trying to draw that here. Um, here's our sinc function, but it's going to be multiplied by our cos. Okay, so this is the impulse response of the bandpass filter. So the impulse response of the bandpass filter. Okay, so if we, if we put our receive signal into a bandpass filter which has this impulse response, then in the frequency domain it will be multiplying by this and therefore it will be only keeping the signal from our radio station. Okay, so this is the first thing we do in our receiver is we put it through a bandpass filter. Then we have this and we need to try to now recover the original signal and interestingly the way we do that is to once again multiply by the cos in the time domain which means convolving in the frequency domain. And why is that? So this, this thing is, of course, our uh, carrier waveform. So we now need our carrier waveform in the receiver. And so this is our cos waveform in the receiver. And we're going to multiply in the time domain. So multiply the output from our bandpass filter. We need to multiply by a cos, because what's going to happen now? Convolution here. Again, when you convolve a function with a delta function, you shift that function to be centered on the delta function. Okay, so here's our function. We're convolving it with this. So this function is going to be shifted to be centered on that delta. It's also going to be shifted to be centered on that delta. So this center point here, the zero, is going to appear where that delta is. The whole thing shifts across. And likewise, it's going to appear there. The whole thing shifts across. So this function will shift to here. This one will shift to double the carrier, and then this will shift to the zero, and this will shift to negative the double. So you will have a half-sized copy of your uh, signal out at uh, two times. So this was 702 kilohertz. Don't forget, 702 kilohertz. So this is going to be now 2 times 702 kilohertz. Okay, so this is what you've done here. And then uh, this is the signal that you're going to be uh, now have. You'll have a component now back in the baseband. And this is the component you're interested in. This is what our ears will be able to hear because we can hear in this range. Unfortunately, these other signals here are going to cause interference and um, uh, problems for us. So we need to get rid of those. So how do we get rid of those? Well, we multiply by a low pass filter. So this is a low pass filter. And this is zero all the way out here. And so now we need to multiply by the low pass filter to get rid of these copies. 
Uh, and so, of course, we know the impulse response of this. So in the time domain, we are now going to be convolving in the time domain. The impulse response of erect uh, is our sync function. Okay, so now we take the output here with multi in the receiver in the time domain. We've put it through a bandpass filter with this impulse response, which was a convolution. We've then multiplied it by our carrier again, and then we put it through another filter, uh, which is convolution, uh, with an impulse response of a delta of a uh, sync function, because this in the frequency domain is going to be multiplying these copies by zero, and so then. The result that we get is our original signal back if we've done everything uh, perfectly. So this is our original signal that we're going to recover. Um, this cannot happen exactly like this in practice uh, because uh, as you can see these impulse responses here are not causal. So this impulse response of this ideal low pass filter uh, is, goes all the way to negative infinity in time which is not causal. So we need in practice to have causal filters, and the same thing was the case for this bandpass filter. So in practice we need to have causal filters, we can't have exactly these ideal. And so this is where in practice, uh, plus there's also noise that gets introduced by the channel. So in practice we don't exactly get our signal back, it will have noise in here, plus some effects from having causal filters. But this is the uh, ideal case. So what does it mean from a uh, block diagram? We just summarize this now. What do we have? We have x of t coming in. Uh, so x of t was coming in. It was then multiplied by the carrier. Uh, so I could call that r of t. So we have that multiplied by r of t. Uh, and then that is transmitted. So this is the transmitter. This is the transmitter. Then we have the channel, and the channel added other radio stations, other other signals, other signals from other stations. And then we had in our receiver, over here is our receiver. So what remind ourselves the first thing we did in our receiver because we had all the other radio stations at neighboring frequency values. So the first thing we did was a bandpass filter. So in our receiver, we do a bandpass filter. Then after the bandpass filter, after the bandpass filter, we needed to again have another mixer to recover our signal at the baseband. So then we have another multiplication by R of T. Then we need to do the last step, which was to remove these terms at the very high frequencies by having a low pass filter. So this is the AM radio process of taking a signal from a microphone uh, and putting it through a channel at an AM radio band and then recovering it at the receiver. So don't forget to like this video and to uh, look below for other links to other videos and to subscribe to the channel for more videos on signals and systems.